when we define the limit of a function at a point, we assumed that the limit was a finite limit, and we called it L. But that doesn't have to be the case. You could actually have an infinite limit at a point. And if you have a function f defined on an interval i and x0 a point of i, you'll say that f has an infinite limit at x0 if f of x becomes either infinitely large or infinitely small as x approaches x0. And we have to distinguish the two. So if f of x becomes infinitely large, what we'll write is that the limit as x approaches x0 of f of x is equal to plus infinity, sometimes just infinity. And what you're saying is that there is no cap that you can put on f of x. You could pick any number you want, however big you want. f of x will eventually be greater than that number. You'll just have to bring x closer to x0. But at some point, you can bring x close enough to x0 that f of x exceeds any finite number that you can imagine, however large it may be. So then we write that the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 is plus infinity. And on the graph, there is a vertical asymptote. We'll talk about that when we draw a graph in a second. And the equation is x equals x0. Of course, f could become infinitely small. In that case, what we write is that the limit as x approaches x0 of f of x is equal to minus infinity. In other words, you could pick any number you want, however small you want. You can make it as negative as you can imagine. f of x will eventually be smaller than that number. You'll just have to bring x a little closer to x0, and then eventually f of x will be smaller than that finite number. So f becomes infinitely small, and we write that the limit of f of x at x0 is minus infinity, and the graph also then has a vertical asymptote, x equals x0. So the limit could be plus infinity or minus infinity. It turns out that more often than not, the left limit and the right limit are different. One might be plus infinity, the other one might be minus infinity. They could both be plus infinity or both be minus infinity, but typically when you have a vertical asymptote, you want to see what happens to the left of it and to the right of it because it could very well be the case that you do not have the same limit. For example, let's just take this function here. Well, we can tell that at x0, the function is actually not defined, and it appears to be the case that the function becomes infinitely small when x approaches x0 from the left, and it becomes infinitely large when x approaches x0 from the right. So here we have the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 plus is plus infinity. In other words, pick any value you want. All you have to do is bring x closer to x0, and f of x will exceed that value, even if it's very large. And then here on the left, we have that the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 minus, so from the left, is minus infinity. And this is our vertical asymptote. Now, an asymptote is a line, it could be vertical, horizontal, or even slant, that the graph of the function approaches more and more as x either approaches x0 or sometimes approaches infinity, we'll talk about that later, but in such a way that the function never reaches the asymptote. In other words, the curve here never hits the dotted line. You can come as close as you want to x0. This curve will come as close as you can imagine to the dotted line, but it will never touch the dotted line. It will never intersect with the asymptote. That's the definition of the asymptote. Now, of course, it comes from the fact that when you talk about the limit as x approaches x0 plus, well, x approaches x0 from the right, but is never equal to x0 because a function never reaches its limit. So this is our vertical asymptote, and we'll see that we can have horizontal asymptotes or slant asymptotes as well. But when we have an infinite limit at a point, then we typically have a vertical asymptote. 
And let's keep in mind that you usually want to investigate what happens to the left and to the right of the asymptote because it doesn't have to be the same limit on either side. Speaking of which, let's do a classic example. It's a very simple example. It's determining the limit uh, as x approaches 1 of 1 over x minus 1. Now, of course, the value x equals 1 is not allowed because you can't divide by 0, but that's okay. x approaching 1 means that x never actually reaches 1. However, what we'll see is that as x approaches 1, the denominator becomes infinitely small, and therefore 1 over something infinitely small becomes infinitely large. But to really understand this, we have to first draw the graph of y is equal to 1 over x. So I've drawn it here in preparation, where we have a vertical asymptote, which is x equals 0. And here we have the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 minus, so from the left, is minus infinity. And here we have the limit as x approaches 0 plus of 1 over x is plus infinity. And it is fundamentally important that you know these limits, because we are going to use these limits to figure out what this limit is equal to. And in fact, any time we have a denominator that cancels, we typically have a vertical asymptote, and we want to use the same method to determine whether the limit is plus or minus infinity on the left and on the right. So let's start by writing the limit. Let's do from the left first. As x approaches 1 minus of x minus 1. Well, as x comes closer and closer to 1, x minus 1 comes closer and closer to 0. So the limit is 0. However, x is smaller than 1, meaning that x minus 1 is actually a negative quantity. And we'll indicate that by writing 0 minus. In other words, the limit is 0, and we approach the limit with the difference x minus 1 being negative. Now, why does this matter? Well, it actually matters because the limit of 1 over x at 0 minus is not the same than at 0 plus. So, we need to distinguish. We need to understand whether what's in the denominator approaches 0 minus or 0 plus, so then we can use the proper limit. And so we'll combine this limit with the limit as x approaches 0 minus of 1 over x is equal to minus infinity. And together, it's going to give us that the limit of 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 minus in other words, from the left, is equal to minus infinity. So that's for x approaching 1 from the left. We can do the same thing approaching from the right. Now the limit, as x approaches 1 from the right, so as x approaches 1 plus, the limit of x minus 1 is, well, 0. However, x is greater than 1, so x minus 1 is a positive quantity, meaning that you approach the limit while being positive. x minus 1 gets closer and closer to 0, but all the while it's a positive number that just gets closer to 0. And so, if we combine that with the fact that the limit of 1 over x, as x approaches 1 from the right, I'm sorry, 0 from the right, is plus infinity, then we get that the limit as x approaches 1 plus of 1 over x minus 1 is plus infinity. And so the two limits, the left limit and the right limit, are not equal to each other, and therefore there is no limit at x equals 1. But keep in mind that what we did is we combined the limit here of just the denominator. We tried to figure out whether it was 0 minus or 0 plus. In other words, did it go to 0 while being a negative number or a positive number? 
because then we could use this reference function here, y is equal to 1 over x, and these two limits here to determine whether the function goes to minus infinity or plus infinity. Now really, this is composition of limits, and we'll talk about that in a separate video. So you don't have to know that right now, though. You can just kind of think this through and realize that, okay, well, it makes sense. This is my denominator, and I'm saying it goes to 0 minus. Here I'm saying if the denominator goes to 0 minus, then the limit is minus infinity, and that's what I get here. And of course, the same applies as x approaches 1 from the right. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.